Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7. But now in its second year, today we're discussing kind of a retrospective of Gran Turismo 7. Two years ago, I was just hearing about the release of this game and said, you know, I'm bored this week. I might as well see if I can go just pick up this game and see what it's all about. And I am extremely happy that I did because man, I don't say this lightly, but my life changed when I picked up Gran Turismo 7. So nowadays when I look at racing games, it's all about a couple of main things. is how they sound, how they look, how compatible they are with various different systems. And prior to Gran Turismo 7, I was kind of sort of getting into sim racing, not really. But Gran Turismo 7 really did push me over the edge into getting a full sim rig set up here that I'm super excited about. So first and foremost, as you can tell, the biggest thing in my mind that I love about Gran Turismo 7 is the graphics. Two years ago, Polyphony Digital released to the world this game. And at that time, and even to this day, I don't feel like that there's been any competition at all in the graphics department. If you take a look at the games that have been released recently, you know, Forza Motorsport, the Crew Motorfest, any of the F1 games, and even Lamont Ultimate. They're good looking games. But if you take, for instance, Forza Motorsport in specific, it's a game that had an additional year and a half development time. You would say that Motorsport 7 and uh, Gran Turismo Sport released at about the same time. And back then, the graphics qualities were, were pretty comparable. They really were. But when this dropped, a year and a half before Forza Motorsport, this, keep in mind, was even a cross-platform game. We're playing on the PlayStation 4 version. And for the longest time, I kid you not, like I would play the PlayStation 5 version and the PlayStation 4 version kind of side by side and look at footage. And it's one of the few times that I look at a cross-platform game and I go, I can't really tell the difference. I mean, Digital Foundry did a very good video that opened my eyes to it where they're talking about like crowd density and like uh, the quality of detail in the environment and the distance. But all the things that you see up close that you're focused on are nearly identical. And I find that absolutely crazy. So then we think that with Forza Motorsport having an additional year and a half of development, this next big AAA game in the sim racing space, or arcade sim racing, simcade space, you'd think that it would be better than Grand Turismo stuff and doesn't even hold a candle up to how this game is. So I applaud Polyphony Digital on creating a revolutionary game ahead of its time and kind of keeping that revolutionary idea going forward is every Gran Turismo game there's something brand new, something revolutionary that keeps it on the cutting edge of technology and graphics has always been at the forefront and they do not skip out on it. And speaking of graphics, one of the other things that I love about this game much like all other Gran Turismo games, is the focus of the cars and the dealership. Of course, it's a dealership, so it should be focused on cars, but having nothing in the background as you just observe the mechanical, artistic beauty of this vehicle in front of you, you take a look at it, you can get in live different colorations as how the light reflects off of these weird and unique colors. You can do these dynamic scenes of how the vehicle looks in the environments. 
and then you can learn more about it. If you're looking for a mid-engine Ferrari with a naturally aspirated V8, then look no further than the 458, and you get all sorts of neat facts about the development, about... I didn't know that it revved to 9,000 RPM. I knew that it was a high revving engine, but not to 9,000, you know? And then again, back to the scapes. You get these beautifully gorgeous rendered landscapes as you just sit and look in awe of this beautiful piece of machinery. There's nothing else that does it quite like Gran Turismo. It's just crazy. And speaking of dealerships, I still enjoy the used car dealership. It's so weird why they have so many cars that can purchase in the normal dealership, also in the used cars dealership. But it doesn't matter that a car has 50,000 miles on it. I'm like, if you drive a normal car, you would notice things like that. But in a video game, you won't notice, you know, the smell of the previous owner, how the chair has got more scratches and wrinkles in it. You won't notice the cigarette burns. I mean, it's just... They're basically brand new, apart from... Oh, by the way, you have this engine that might need to be rebuilt slightly sooner than you're thinking. It's all virtual anyway. I'm not going to notice any of this until the car blows up, and then you just drop 10,000 virtual currencies on a virtual engine, and it just appears like it works like normal again. I am always confused, but I still love the absolute crap out of the used color car dealership. Not many other games have it. I still think it's a nice touch. This one should also go without saying. When you think of video game UI elements for menus, nowadays they're all so minimalistic. And because of the lack of character in the minimalistic kind of visuals, you lose personality. Gran Turismo, since the very first one, has had unique menus, and there is no other genre of music that when you think that genre of music, you immediately are transported to Gran Turismo, and that's Jazz Fusion. It gave me a love for Jazz Fusion because you listen to this absolutely baller music, You've got this really nice, detailed menu of this environment. And I think the two of them together, as they've morphed through time through the different games, have kind of, in my mind, become, become synonymous with one another. And I love that. I really do love that about Gran Turismo. Way back when... When Gran Turismo 1 was being developed for the PlayStation 1, it was part of a time where licensing just to even get cars was a struggle. So for a developer to also get the licensing for the likeness for even racetracks was just absolutely like... We don't have much money to begin with, and now you're asking us to spend more money on just being able to drive on an environment? No. So the developers had to get creative and make their own environments, and I that has become a main staple in Gran Turismo, even though as the years have gone on, that less and less virtual made up tracks carry over the idea of still having them as a part of Gran Turismo is in its DNA so you have tracks like Tokyo Expressway High Speed Ring and Trial Mountain all of these tracks again were fake courses that were made out of complete necessity of needing tracks to showcase these cars on and to show off the physics that you, uh, well, the individuals at Polyphony Digital had created. So instead of spending that licensing money 
on tracks. They were able to do it just on the cars and create memorable tracks that are still with us to this day. I don't know many other racing franchises apart from really Need for Speed or Burnout that part of their DNA has been fake tracks that carry on over. I mean, you have Forza that, again, created fake tracks. But how many are really still with them? I don't think any of them, are actually. Hot take time. I enjoy the menu books. I actually do. What I don't enjoy about them is the heavy-handedness in making sure that you have to complete them to progress the storyline. If they were more of like a side option where by completing some of these menu books, you could get a little bit more cash, fine. But it kind of removed the open-endedness that was the career mode of previous Gran Turismo games. I still remember playing Gran Turismo 4 and feeling a little bit overwhelmed as to what to do due to the lack of direction, but there still was some direction. This game was, you do the menu books. Okay, when you're done with the menu book, you go to the next one. When you're done with the, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. It's At some point, it's like you needed to take a break from them, almost. So having them say like, hey, if you beat these certain tracks, you can unlock a couple of more, which will give you credit reward. That would be nice and different. But again, it was a requirement, not a extra add-on. Again, in theory, I like them. In practice, I agree with the rest of the community. It wasn't all that great. License tests, license tests, and license tests. This was one of the main driving forces behind the career mode in... Uh, previous Gran Turismo games and uh, <laughs> I they are so unique no other franchise has even dared to touch license tests and I love them it's just these weird one off like hey if you want to get better at driving your car try doing this Okay, so you didn't get it? Well, try again, try again, try again, try again. In hopes that you eventually do get there. So yeah, I think these license tests are very much so in the DNA of Gran Turismo. Because Gran Turismo is a pure, dedicated driving sim. Or at least that's a catchphrase. And sometimes you got to break things down to practice them and practice them and get better at them and get better at them until you can finally pull off doing this as a gold medal. You get there eventually. And if the racing in the dedicated career mode, the racing in multiplayer, the license tests, the time trials and circuit experiences, if that all wasn't enough to begin with, then you have dumb stuff like this in missions. And I love them to death. I really do. Some of them are stupidly outrageously difficult. But the amount of content that you get in this game. So again, missions like this where you focus on racing simulators work with fuel. You have to worry about that. You have to worry about pitting and all the rest of this. But then there are missions dedicated towards fuel economy where you're in a pickup truck going around Trial Mountain as fuel efficiently as possible going up these giant hills using as little power as possible 
who thinks of this? I it's just they're dumb, but I love them. I love them. I really do. And if that wasn't enough, then on top of it all, they give us an unnecessarily over the top photography mode. And not only can you choose of 3036 different spots you have the 494 different cars that you can pick from in game to then just throw whatever down so you've got these great landscapes you've got your cars and then you can just adjust camera settings like you're an actual photographer and it has like exposure correction and focus and you know the f-stop of the aperture the shutter speed being able to change the you know the panning and add all these sorts of different effects until you get this i mean what the hell is this it's beautiful i uh, i'm gobsmacked at at just what you can do in this game and I'll be completely honest, like, I have to test out the photo modes of each racing game I'm in so I can create thumbnails. And this makes it, like, this photo mode, you get all of this in the replay. So you just do a quick little race, and then you just whip out the photo mode, and you get these amazing shots. I just... <sighs> It's it's so good. It's so good. And that was one of the other things, too, that I didn't even get to touch on really yet, was the fact that through all of this as well, Polyphony Digital has worked with car manufacturers themselves to create futuristic-looking cars from the manufacturer's design language. And... Ironically, that's how the Bugatti Chiron came to be. It was originally a Vision Gran Turismo concept that eventually Bugatti loved it so much that they pared it down a little bit. The race car version, that is. And the Chiron just happened to be underneath all of that. Which is crazy to think. It really is. How a single video game has been able to affect so many things in the real world where there are so many cars based off of these Gran Turismo concepts or that they made prototype cars based off the renderings. So I think that's one of the things that I wanted to end on today is these past two years has brought me an incredible amount of joy from just being a standard car lover to enjoying so many different racing video games that have come out to really diving into the sim racing space because of this game buying multiple wheelbases so I could play with my friends at my bachelor party and still making sure that I'm playing every month to see what new content was dropped loving and appreciating the detail, the passion the love of cars that have gone towards making this game and it's all because of one guy's unapologetic vision of making the best racing game that he can and you see so many developers these days lose that focus where whether it be due to time or due to money or due to something they skip out on that vision and Kazunori Yamauchi has said, no, screw all that. I want to make the best racing game I can each generation. And he's got the funding and he's got the manpower to back it up. And when people say, well, you should really release this game on time. He goes, look at my catalog. Look at the games that I've created. And people just kind of go, yeah, sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> keep going. Well, we'll just keep on waiting. And he helps produce some of the best racing games every generation. Yes, some of them have been misses. But all in all, each one of them have become a time capsule during 
those time periods in car culture. So again, if you've enjoyed this content, you know, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I am for sure probably going to be releasing more Gran Turismo content. It's going to be slowing down quite a bit because nobody wants to watch the stupid license tests anymore. I don't blame them. And the monthly content is dwindling down to a couple of cars. I don't think it's worth commenting on a Mitsubishi every month or something. So again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.